Hey folks, let's make something fun. As promised, we're going to start testing the 5.5 watt laser man, laser engraver, and cutter from Flying Bear. Oh, and I should mention, as of the date of this video, the kit is on sale for about $200 US. So if after you see what I'm about to show you, you think this little machine would be a good addition to your toolkit, I'll leave a link down in the description below for you to go check it out. Now, some of you may have already seen a bit of what this thing can do, if you saw my last video, that is. I made a Dungeon Master's War Chest using not only the laser, but my Anticubic Cobra Max, as well as some good old-fashioned woodworking. And based in no small part by the video's performance, I'd say you folks were as pleased as I am with the results. I'll link that video below if you want to check it out, after this one, of course. Now, proper testing requires proper materials to test with, which segues nicely into today's video sponsor, Makerstock. Are you a maker looking for high-quality materials cut to size? Check out Makerstock.com. They offer a ton of materials such as Baltic birch plywood, MDF, and acrylic sheet. Whatever you're cutting, Makerstock has got you covered. They offer custom cuts as well as laser cutting services to make it easy for you to get exactly what you need for your next project. Whether you're a DIY enthusiast or a professional fabricator, Makerstock has everything you need to bring all your ideas to life. And don't forget to use the promo code PRIMAL10 at checkout to get 10% off your purchase. So head on over today and start creating. Huge shout out to the folks over at Makerstock for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so we're going to pop into Lightburn here, and I'm going to steal that quote from Odin. And this works a lot like Photoshop or Illustrator. So I just picked the text tool and popped it over here. And I'm going to grab it and resize it so that it better suits the project that I'm working on here. Let me take a second and... Look at the layout and see if it's going to be okay. I'm trying to find a cool font to use. And we will... What do we got here? Oh, that looks cool. And we'll go with that one. All right, and I'm going to reduce it a little bit to make it a little bit more manageable because that's actually a pretty, pretty big uh, layout right here. And I'm going to split this up into three lines instead of just the two. Um, trying to figure out what words I want where. And really, this is all personal preference and taste. Uh, w whether you're doing your name, a quote, um, whatever it is, it, how you make it look however you want it to look. And it really is exactly like working in Photoshop or Illustrator. And, and, and to be clear, you don't have to be an expert in either one of those things in order to be able to do this. This is pretty user-friendly. So I've also got some image files that I think would look pretty cool here and put a nice border and frame around the quote. I'm going to go through and pick one out here and pop it on. Now, one thing I will say that you need to keep in mind is you have the ability to split up all the elements that you bring into your creation so that they could burn at different rates, different speeds, different intensities, so that you can get different effects. So, for example, if you're doing something that will eventually need to be cut out, the last step in the process might be a cut line. And the first step in the process might be the engraving. And maybe one engraving is darker than another. What I need to do at this point is align these two items together so that they're centered and they look good. But that's a square, and I need it more of a rectangle. So what I'm going to do is unlock the... Uh, setting here which allows me to adjust the width and the height independent of each other and again like i said on the right hand side up here you'll see i have a fill and an image and the image is that border and i'm going to have those burn at two different rates and that way i'll get maybe a deeper engraving with the letters and more of a surface engraving when it comes to the border that i want to put there um, but you can set yours up to do whatever you want Eventually, when, when all this is done, I'll create one final box around the whole item, and that box will be a line that I'll use to cut it free from its acrylic prison. After saving the G-code file to the SD card, all you got to do is pop it on over to the laser man, select the file, align the material, and start burning. And while it's not necessary for every print, I do make it a habit to run the frame sequence to be sure that the material is well within the boundaries of the cut. 
By doing it every time, I'm developing a habit and won't run into the chance of forgetting and causing a failed print that may also result in wasted materials. Please don't ask me how I learned that lesson. And after a little bit of burning, we've got our results. Let's pop on over to the bench and take a look at it. Mistakes were made, what can I say? Nothing bad, mind you. Full disclosure, it was my fault. The machine did just fine. The problem I have... Well, let me just show you here. Keep in mind, this is my first attempt at laser engraving acrylic ever. Now, I will tell you that I'm very satisfied with the results. It came out great. I can't lie there. I gotta be honest, I was impressed. I wasn't sure I was going to get the settings right, and for the most part, they were pretty good. It's a bit of trial and error after all, but to my surprise, the engravings came out fine. I don't know if you can see that right here. Here, let me try to overlay a picture and get you a better shot. Now, I don't know if you could see right here how these came out, but it did turn out... I mean, damn God, it just came out perfect. Simon, what do you think? Impressive. My sentiments exactly. Now, while this came out perfectly fine, it's still going to be scrapped, and I'll tell you why in a minute. I did go ahead and finish the job and cut it out to see how well that part would perform, and the cut was pretty damn clean. Very happy with that. Turned out wonderful, too. The mistake I made were the proportions. This is just way too big for what I want it to be. And while I could have redesigned the piece and try again, it would have just taken too long to get everything back to square one, redesign it, set it up, and burn it again. Also, the font is just, it's, it's not making me happy. So bottom line, I want to find a better font, resize this whole thing, rebuild the job, and do it right so that it looks perfect for this upcoming project. So I guess I'm just going to use this piece for scrap and testing going forward. I did do this mock-up uh, of this little badge thing here. It says Lux Machina, which means light machine. I did the whole thing using Lightburn, and it didn't take long at all. Like I mentioned before, I use Lightburn just like you would Photoshop, or more accurately, Illustrator. Again, it's very user-friendly, and let me say again, you do not need to know either Photoshop or Illustrator to get started using Lightburn. It's very user-friendly. I'm Pretty pleased with the way this little thing came out. You can see here, I welded a bit of styrene to the back so that the letters could pop out just a little bit more, and it looks pretty cool. I might stick it to the machine. Hell, I don't know. Give it a little badge or something. Who knows? But based on the initial test with the acrylic, I say two thumbs up for this bad boy. Now, as far as that failed piece is concerned, if you want to see what that was for and how it's going to be used, you folks are going to have to stay subscribed. It's going to be a pretty damn awesome build. We're talking LEDs, foam smithing, 3D printing, laser engraving, even a bit of woodworking. Something for every maker out there. It's going to be epic. Okay, final thoughts. What's my opinion so far? Well, for a $210 investment, it's a fantastic option for anybody who's ever thought about getting into laser engraving but doesn't want to have that multi-thousand dollar price tag that usually comes along with some of the higher end machines. Now, I've done a lot of stuff with this thing so far, and I'll be sharing all that with you in the coming weeks. So far, I have to say I'm very happy with the results. And don't worry, we've got more materials we're going to be testing coming real soon. I just didn't want to over-inundate you in one video with all these different types of materials. I just felt like it'd be overload and the video would just go on for way too long. Having said that, respecting your time and all, folks, I'm going to have to say that's about all for today's video. So again, thanks to the folks over at Makerstock for supplying the material that I used today. I really do appreciate your support. And thanks again to the folks over at Flying Bear for sending out this laser for me to test. Links are in the description down below if you want to check out any of the things I used in today's video. That'll do it today, folks. You all have a great day, and I'll see you soon.